First Kings chapter five. And Hiram, king of Tyre, Second Samuel five eleven. Second Samuel five eleven. Second Samuel five eleven. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons, and they built David an house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for all people Israel's sake. So, Hiram shows up with David. Verses 6 to 11 of Second Samuel. Jerusalem is established as the capital of the city. Read something interesting in 2 Samuel 5, 4. <clears throat> when David was 30 years old, he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years. And in Hebron, reigned over Judah 7 years and 6 months. In Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and 3 years over all Israel and Judah. Then Jerusalem established. So, when we come over here, the first Kings 5 it has to be a minimum of 33 years because David has died he reigns 33 years in Jerusalem he outlives David and he sees David's son Solomon he provided the work for David to build his house and David said Lord I dwell in cedars I dwell in a beautiful home and you're out there in curtains now Hiram who by what we read about this gentleman, loves the Lord, loves David, loves Solomon. Maybe his name is the Lamb's Book of Life. God's going to have him bring the utensils to build Solomon's temple. And Hiram king of Tyre sent his servants unto Solomon. For he had heard that they had anointed him king in the room of his father. And Hiram was an ever, I mean, yeah, ever, a lover of David and of course perverts have perverted that verse there that lover is the first time that shows up what kind of lover is that is it a homosexual sodomite love let's do scripture with scripture Titus 1 8 and we'll go here because let's look at the word lover Titus chapter 1 verse 8. And we'll see exactly what it is. And we'll start in verse 7 for the context. Titus 1 7 for a bishop. That's the head of the church. Must be blameless. As the steward of God. Not self will. Not soon anger. Not given to wine. No striker, not given to filthy liquor, but a lover of hospitality. Does that sound like a sexual love? A lover of good men. Well, you could pervert that. But you can't pervert that same word with hospitality. It's a love beyond all love. Only perverts and God-rejecting, word of God-denying people. Oh, uh, look at that, say. Well, match that word with the same verse that in Titus said, lover hospitality. What are you going to do to sodomize that? You can't. So it's not that Hiram and David had a sexual love. Hiram had a great uh, zeal and earning and respect for David. That's what it is. And Solomon said to Hiram, saying, Thou knowest how that David my father could not build a house under the name of the Lord his God. All right, now let's look at the reasons why David can't do it. For the wars which were about him on every side. David shed blood by wars. Now there is no murder plea, but David was charged with murder and adultery. But the fact is that David shed blood even in war. That's not good enough for the temple of God. Until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. Now Solomon has peace from David's wars. 
But now, and we saw that in verse 4, there's peace in the land. But now the Lord my God has given me rest, peace, on every side, so that there is neither adversary, evil, uh, enemies, nor evil occurring. And that's the only place that word shows up. And that current occurring, I, I thought it was like occupant, but it means happening. There's no even, there's no adversaries of, of wickedness, enemies, there's no evil things going on. It's clean, it's pure in the land. That's quite weird to be to see. And behold, I purpose. Now that's the second place that word shows up. And we're talking about Solomon and we're talking about David. And we could, and we're going to, that word purpose is kind of interesting because let's go look at the first place it shows up. Ruth 2.16. Now I thought this, maybe it's not interesting to you, but I thought it was interesting that this word shows up. What's your purpose? Ruth 2.16. Talking about Boaz. Verse 15. Boaz is a subject. 16. Let fall let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose that's the first time that word shows up for her that's Ruth isn't it funny the first two places that this shows up Solomon the son of David the first place shows up is their great great grandfather and their great great soon to be grandmother that Boaz purposely put food before Ruth to take care of her David purpose to build that house. What are the two contexts of, of this family? It's one man's family to provide a need. Now, God don't need a place to stay, but that, that's what David purposes in the heart. With reading Ruth 2.16, David said, God, you need that as much as I have it. I thought that was interesting. That word shows up earlier with their great, 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 grandparents in the book of Ruth which started off David behold I purpose to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God that's David as the Lord spank, oh, as the Lord spank unto David my father that's Solomon excuse me as the Lord spank unto David my father both of them have that desire God your temple in curtains is not good enough that's what you establish in, by Moses but we are now established in Jerusalem. Thy son, whom I set upon the throne of thy room, he shall build a house unto my name. That was prophesied in 2 Samuel 7.12 to David. David, you can't do it. But your son on that throne is going to do what you wanted to do. Now therefore command thou that they... You, that means cut down, me cedar trees out of Lebanon. And Lebanon is known for the cedar trees. And if you go on the internet now, they'll, they'll blast Solomon. They'll blast the people of the Bible on ruining trees. There are still cedar trees over there. They were smart. When they cut trees down, they planted new ones. And my servants shall be with thy servants, unity, and unto thee will I give hire for thy servants. I'm going to pay for all your men. I'll give them a salary. According to all that thou shalt appoint. You're in charge of the workers. You appoint the men. I will pay them. Look at the trust these two men have. For thou knowest that there is not among us. Any that can skill. That's the first time that word shows up. To hew timber like on to the Sidonians. So I guess the Sidonians had a mark of the people to be cut in wood. And it came to pass when Hiram heard the words of Solomon that he rejoiced greatly. So here he is. He's happy at the word of God. He's happy at the building. He's happy for God. And said, Blessed be the Lord this day. Capital L. Capital O, capital R, Jehovah. 
I would assume Iron's name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when he shows up at the Great White Throne Judgment, there's a possibility, hey, your name's there. As a heathen. And it came to pass, when Hiram heard the words of Solomon, that he rejoiced greatly, and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, that's Jehovah, which has given unto David a wise son over this great people. And we've already seen it. It's The wisdom of God is reaching out to all people. They know what God has done to Solomon. And Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, now they don't come together. They're sending male ambassadors back and forth. I have considered the thing which thou sentest to me for. And I will do all that thy desire concerning timber of cedar and concerning timber of fir tree. Both of them tree. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon unto the sea. And I will convey, first time that word shows up, and the only other place is Nehemiah 2.7. Convey. You heard a conveyor belt. You know, it's going to bring it. It's going to roll it on. Then by sea and floats. That's the first time that word shows up. They're going to float them on the water. You, you've seen loggers on rivers. The only other place that shows up. 2 Chronicles 2.16. Unto the place that thou shalt appoint me. All right, you name the place where you want it. I will deliver them by floats. I will convey them. I will bring them to where you want them. And I will cause them to be discharged. The only place that word shows up. Discharge. Oh, here they are. They are now yours. There and thou shalt receive them. And thou shalt accomplish my desire. What's the desire? What could be the desire of this man? In giving food for my household. Wow, what a desire. What an ambition. Fame, money, no. Just give me food so I can survive. That's what I want. So Hiram gave Solomon cedar trees and fir trees according to all his desire. So Solomon would have to, all right, I need this amount of trees. I need this amount of wood. Solomon gave Hiram, now here's the, here's the payment. 20,000 measures of wheat for food to his household. And 20 measures of pure oil, that would be olive oil, for cooking, for anointing. Thou, thus gave Solomon and Hiram year by year. So every year, that's what Solomon gave him for those trees. And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom. We've read about that. As he promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and they too made a league together, unity. And King Solomon raised a levy, that's enlisted men for public service. It is not a draft. A draft is for war. A levy is, hey, you're going to go work for the government. You there, you are now going to work for the public work. You there, you're going to do... You know, the city hall work. You are going to clean the streets. But this levy is for the for the temple. You guys are going to go out in the woods. You're going to go out to the mountains. And you're going to cut lumber. That's your job. Kind of funny because. I'm going to say draft. But it's not, a, it's not a military order. But Solomon had to. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Doesn't look, look like they're volunteers. Maybe there wasn't enough. I don't know. But Solomon had to step in and say, you, 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 you. Levy was 30,000 men. And he sent them to Lebanon. 10,000 a month. So it would be three months. Three months of men. By courses. A month. So each man would work 30 days. They went to Lebanon. And two months at home. And Adam was over the levy. So they were going to go out 30 days. Then another 30 would come. Those 30 would be home for 60 days. The ones that went, they worked 30 days. Then they come home and it, you can figure out how it worked out. Because Solomon is not a fool. I, 
I can't figure that out. That's too much math for me in, in months. But Solomon had it worked out with those 30,000 men. And Solomon had three score and 10,000, that would be 70,000, that bared burdens. All right? Get the men their food, draw their water for them, cook their meals, carry the lumber, carry the tools, sharpen the tool, whatever had to be done. And four score, that is 80,000 hewers in the mountains. So go down, 80,000, go down and cut those trees down in those mountains. That's a lot of labor. Besides the chief of Solomon's offers, the head, those in charge, which were over the work, we call them managers. We would call them foremen. 3,300, which ruled over the people that brought in the work. And have you ever been out in a construction, ever been out in a in a building project, they'd be the ones with the white hats. Solomon had rulers and leaders over the people. And he had people working. Even in the time of Solomon, and even with God blessing, he still had to have people over people. And the king commanded, and they brought great stones. Costly. That's the first time that word shows up. Costly stones. Costs a lot of money. So this just ain't granite. This ain't just, these are stones of value. And huge stones, that means they cut them. To lay the foundation of the house. So the foundation of the house of the Lord costs money. And Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders, that's the first time that word shows up, builders. Solomon's builders. Did heal them. The stone. So both men are cutting trees and both men are cutting stone. And the stone quarters. That's the only time that word shows up. Stone squares were exactly what it said. They made the stone. And if they were rough cut, they straighten them out. Make sure their angles are proper. Make sure the sides are straight. That's what their job is. Has to be perfect for the Lord. So they prepared the temper and stones to build the house. So that's the preparation. That's not the building. This is getting all the supplies we need to be. That's like running down to the hardware store. Let's get everything we need before we do what we need to do. 